Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing our planet, planet Earth, and the history of some of the most massive mountain ranges, how they influenced our planet, and more importantly, what the future mountain ranges might look like in the next 200 and million years. And more specifically, we'll discuss the concept that the geologists usually refer to as super mountains, the mountain ranges that are generally much, much larger than anything we have right now and some unusual effects they actually have on the planet, including the evolution of life on the planet. And let's actually start with that. So historically speaking, when it comes to studying our planet, we know that because of the plate tectonics and because of various activity on the surface, the actual surface of the planet and the mountain ranges changed quite dramatically in the last few billions of years. But there were several times in history where something known as a supercontinent would form somewhere on the planet. A supercontinent in this case would refer to one single large piece of land surrounded by a relatively large ocean, with the most famous one, the one you see right here, known as Gondwana. This most likely formed around 550 million years ago, but then started to fall apart around 180 million years ago, turning into several continents we have today. You can actually explore this yourself using this beautiful simulation from Ian Webster, the link for which you can find in the description below. And because of the plate tectonics and the way that the continents interact, generally when you basically have a lot of continents fall into one single piece of land, they'll actually start forming extremely large mountain ranges, even larger than anything we have today. And that's mostly because of these so-called continental convergent boundaries, where essentially two plates start colliding with one another, producing really large mountains on top. And generally, these mountain ranges can grow for a pretty long time, several hundred million years sometimes. But they don't last forever. As a matter of fact, all of these ancient mountain ranges are long gone to erosion and to a lot of other effects on the surface of the planet, with the action from the wind, water, and other forces basically making it fall apart with time. But by using some of the modern mountains and looking what's inside of them, the scientists today can generally figure out what sort of mountain ranges existed in the past through studying various types of elements and through specific minerals that we find inside of them. For example, zirconium or zircon crystals, which are normally used in some of the cheaper jewelry, are often used in these various studies. And that's because these types of minerals are only formed in extremely high pressures below some of the heaviest mountains on the planet but can usually survive most of the erosion that affects the rest of the mountain. And the precise composition of some of these zirconium crystals can generally reveal the specific conditions where these crystals were made. For example, by finding some kind of a zirconium with relatively low amounts of what's known as lutetium, a rare earth element, it's generally believed today that these types of zirconium crystals can only be formed at the base of an extremely high mountain with one of these studies in the description below discovering at least two times in history where this type of zirconium was actually made in relatively large amounts, suggesting two major mountain range formations with some of the highest mountains that ever existed, super mountains, something that no longer exists anywhere today. And these would be at least three to maybe even five times larger than the modern Himalaya mountains, so essentially we're talking about something that's thousands and thousands of kilometers in size. This is one of the NASA images of the Himalayas. And it just so happens that the first spike was detected around 650 to maybe 500 million years ago. And it's very likely related to the Gondwana supercontinent you see right here, with one of the mountain ranges maybe being somewhere here. But most interestingly is the fact that this particular super mountain appeared approximately 40 million years before an extremely important event in the history of the biosphere. The event we refer to as the Cambrian Explosion, where a lot of really complex, really unusual multicellular animals appeared on the planet and existed and interacted with one another for millions of years. This was actually one of the most important evolutionary events that defined how life evolved later on. And the scientists believe that this is actually connected. They believe that these super mountains, as they became eroded over millions of years, as they eroded, introduced a huge amount of various nutrients into the oceans on the planet, allowing the life to evolve really quickly. In other words, by breaking apart these really large mountains, suddenly there was a tremendous amount of nutrients in the water. 
with these so-called Gondwanan supermountains very likely being the cause of all of this, at least according to the scientists in this paper. But in this case, they believe it also happened sometime before that. Because another super mountain range existed roughly around 2 to possibly 1.8 billion years ago. A mountain range that's sometimes referred to as the Nuna Super Mountain. With this mountain range very likely being at least 8,000 kilometers long and also being part of another supercontinent. But this is when life was mostly bacteria and various types of archaea. It was actually really simple. Although the scientists in this case believe that these mountains, as they also became eroded and fell apart, introduced all of the necessary components to once again help life evolve into something different. And in this case, evolving from prokaryotic simple cells into eukaryotic more advanced cells. So they actually believe that the evolution of eukaryotic cells might have been dramatically increased and encouraged and possibly even caused by erosion of these super mountains from 2 billion years ago, with the introduction of elements like iron and phosphorus into the oceans being the biggest addition to the water, which most likely increased the evolution rate on the planet, while at the same time possibly also changing the atmosphere and maybe even releasing oxygen into the atmosphere as well. But more intriguingly is the fact that in between these two super mountains, in between 1.7 billion years ago and 715 million years ago, not much happened in terms of mountain formation on the planet according to modern studies. And today geologists refer to this period as boring billion, mostly because during that period not much evolution happened on the planet either, the life remained more or less the same. With the implication being that super mountains might play a very important role in helping life evolve really quickly or at least play a very important role in enriching oceans and the rest of the planet with a lot of nutrients from the erosion of these very large mountains. And when it comes to these super mountains, it's also sometimes interesting to see into the future, to try to predict how the evolution of the planet will transform and change in the next few hundreds of millions of years. And in this sense, today the scientists actually have a lot of different tools to play around with that create various rules for how the planet is going to be evolving in the next few millions of years and how the continents are going to be moving around. And at least one such study that, as always, you can find in the description below, decided to take this a little bit further and find out when the next massive mountain range is going to be formed as well and where exactly it's going to be located. Although in this case it's not truly a super mountain, it's just a relatively large mountain range, possibly similar to the Himalayas, which are no longer going to be around by the time this comes into play. And so here all of this is based on the simulation using the modern rules of the evolution of plate tectonics. And it looks like in approximately 200 million years from now, there's going to be a really really large mountain range once again in the region where India is located. And the scientists refer to this particular mountain range as the Somalian Mountains, mostly because it's made out of Somalia and it also seems to be in the location where Himalayas are as well. And being able to predict the future mountains in this case could actually help us understand where our planet is headed and what sort of climate we can expect in the future. And we're talking about really, really, really far future. And in this case, this mountain belt is very likely going to be formed between the region between Madagascar and Africa, and it would very likely also be strongly curved, it's not going to be straight. With the northwest part of India being completely buried by Somalia, but later on re-emerging as Somalia rotates and exposes this region. With scientists comparing this to what most likely happened in western Norway around 400 million years ago. The large mountainous regions in Norway were formed in a very similar way. But obviously here we don't really know exactly how this is going to play out and this is just a preliminary discussion based on the modern understanding of plate tectonics. Naturally more studies are needed and a lot more exploration is needed before we can create some kind of a futuristic version of planet Earth 200 million years in the future. But until someone does that, well that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And also check out the charities I'm currently supporting for the reasons in the video in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.